Why do Kindles never die? I'm Connor, I'm a Network Infrastructure and Cloud Computing major in college, and in this video I want to talk to you about refresh rates, Kindles, and why they never die. What prompted this video? Because this is quite out of nowhere. I'm talking about Kindle in 2021. Firstly, I found my old Kindle. Woo! Ancient thing altogether, but it, it still functions. And what particularly sparked my interest to make this video was that the display is still on. It is still on. Like, no joke. You can still see the text. There's no battery life in it. I tried to plug it in. I tried to do all that. There's no power in it. But the screen is still on. How is that even a thing? Why is it a thing? Well, funny you should ask. You see, first of all, we should probably explain why it's a thing. This Kindle, the ancient Kindles, which are still used today, for whatever reason, for some people, they use a technology called e-ink displays. Now, your smartphone probably runs on OLED, a technology that allows for more LDO, local dimming zones, and it allows for no backlight, it allows for closer pixels, for a higher pixel density, and it allows for better overall experience. LCD tech is where you have a backlight, and then you have your local dimming zones, and then each there's more, less pixels, which means it's less detailed, there's less inky blacks, that kind of thing. Micro LED is a form of technology where there's less of a gap between the local dimming zones, so there's better inky blacks, and there's more pixels per inch, however, there's still a backlight. Mini LED is where there's a backlight, but there's less local dimming zone, or more local dimming zones, I should say, which allows for better overall experience because of the inky blacks. Of course, it's not as detailed because there's more or less pixels per inch. However, there's a tiny bit more detail because there's a tiny bit more pixels per inch. Now, let's discuss micro LED. Micro LED is pretty much OLED without the drawbacks of burning. However, it has all the characteristics of an LED display. You have your local dimming zones, which are a ton of them for your inky blacks, all that. You have your really tight pixels for more pixels per inch. And there's no backlight, which allows for better inky blacks, allows for thinner displays. Now, what is e-ink? This was a technology that was barely used, but it was fairly used back in uh, the early 2000s. And what it allowed you to do is it implemented a, a display where there'd either be black or white pixels. That is it. How this worked is you got your refresh rate. And we're going to be getting into refresh rates in a minute, so get, we'll get to that. Refresh rates would refresh the whole display to whatever you needed. Because, let's be fair, a Kindle was only used for reading. It wasn't used for web browsing or it didn't need to show colours, so it was only showing text. So what I would need to do is, when you press the button, it would refresh down the way to the next page. Refresh all the pixels. So, that is how it manages to keep its battery because the Kindle would save its current state until refreshed again. So when the battery goes low on the Kindle, it'll save its current state, you know, it'll show your warning symbol, your warning sign, and that's it. It'll save its state until you charge it up. Micro USB, by the way, not USB Type-C. Maybe if they came out with a modern Kindle, they'd do that. But who wants a modern Kindle? I've explained how the e-ink display works. But how does refresh rate come into play? And why is it a massive factor with this? I'm glad you should ask. And I'm gonna to explain to you how. Refresh rate 
is defined by how fast it takes for you to refresh from one screen display whatever you're displaying on screen to another. It goes all the way from 1 hertz to over 300 hertz on some gaming monitors now. No one needs 300 hertz because law diminishing marginal returns. If we go for 1 hertz, what can that be used? Well, it's very simple. Something like an Apple Watch can take advantage of this for things like saving time. So it can bring the power usage way down. That's why the LTPO display is so crucial to always on technology, which it's a new enough technology that now. So the Kindle refreshes at a certain amount. Your smartphone refreshes at a certain amount. This right here, this is an iPhone 10. It refreshes at 60 Hertz. Now a modern Samsung Galaxy phone will refresh at 120 hertz. So this just means it'll be faster as you're scrolling, the screen will refresh to the new content faster. That's all it means. So that is what refresh rates are and why your Kindle lasts forever. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a like. Maybe consider subscribing. Let me know what you think in the comment section below or consider joining my discord link in the video description thank you very much for watching i'll catch you next one goodbye